Well, Daniel, uh, I'm glad you're doing uh, these interviews, and uh, I haven't got so much attention in years. So, uh, and as you know, I retired in 1975. So anyone just 39 years of age and under hasn't been born when I retired. <laughs> so, so we're going back in history a long, long way here. And uh, so it's, uh, I've had an interesting life uh, in baseball. And uh, I think uh, it's unique in the sense that I lasted uh, 20 years in the big leagues. Uh, I tell people I never considered myself a celebrity because I played with celebrities and I know what a celebrity is like a Willie Mays and Mickey Mantle and uh, all these great players that, that I played with. Uh, 15 Hall of Famers I had on the, my same team that I was with and I was so fortunate to uh, play with top organizations in baseball you know starting out with the Cardinals and uh, also being able to play for the Giants and, and, and the Cubs. Of course, the Cubs didn't win many games, but they, uh, a lot of Cubs fans all over the country, and uh, they persevere, you know, uh, in uh, knowing that their club is probably not going to win. And then playing for the Yankees and, uh, and these great organizations. And so that was really uh, neat because as you know, the Yankees have won more than any team in baseball history. And the Yankees, uh, and I'm wearing a Yankee uniform today, right? <laughs> so uh, this is not the uniform that I wore when I played for the Yankees. Because I think my top uh, playing weight was 195 and I'm, I'm about 220 <laughs> right now. So I would not fit into my uniforms uh, when I played. But uh, I was invited to the Yankee Old Timers game in 2009. And uh, my wife, Nancy, was able to go with me. And we had a great time over three days. Anyway, we were, I was given a uniform. In fact, I was given two, two full uniforms uh, by the Yankees. And it fit me. So, so it fits me now. <laughs> and, uh, and so I'm going to uh, just, you know, stick with the... Sometimes if I want to confuse people, I'll go out and I'll wear a cardinal hat and then I'll have a Yankee uniform or, uh, or vice versa, you know, or it may be Cubs, you know. And, and I really confuse people because, you know, how can, how can you be Yankee, Cub, Cardinal, and all that? <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of fun uh, to be able to, to do that. And... I've had an advantage in that uh, so many people are into baseball that I can strike up a conversation with just about anyone that's a baseball fan. And, uh, and, and, and so uh, we meet people, strange, total strangers that we don't know when we travel. And, uh, and I'm able to get into a baseball conversation and, and, uh, and it's, kind of enjoyable to me and to the person because they're a, a fan. They're a real fan uh, of the game. And so, uh, so, so that's kind of neat that it opens doors for me, uh, even to go into schools and things like that. And so uh, I can get into the school and, 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 and pretty well I have a connection uh, to begin with. And then uh, I can, uh, bring something to the kids that they need <laughs> and uh, maybe they'll listen to me even more than they'll listen to uh, sometimes even their parents or sometimes their uh, their, their teachers at school uh, simply because I'm a baseball player I mean it doesn't make sense but you know that's just the, the way it is and so so today we're going to be talking about uh, baseball and uh, and different uh, clubs that uh, I, I was with, and I wanted uh, to go from uh, just kind of ask the question, uh, just to, to summarize some of these uh, ball uh, ball clubs that I was with, uh, and over a twenty-year period of time, you know, we're talking about. 
uh, so so many uh, things and so much traveling and different places, different teams and different players. And uh, and I've seen about four or five thousand games, you know, so uh, in in my career. And so. So a question sometimes comes up, you know, how did it feel when you played for the Cardinals, you know, or how did it feel when you played for the Cubs? Well, let's take those first two uh, to begin with, uh, because uh, playing for the Cardinals, see, uh, when I grew up as a as a young man in Oklahoma, we could get KMOX, you know, the Cardinals station. And I became a Cardinal fan, you know, when I was a teenager. And uh, I became a fan of Stan Musial, for example, you know, the great Stan Musial. And and the Cardinals uh, had uh, excellent broadcasting. You know, at one time when I joined the Cardinals, they had uh, Jack Buck, and they had Joe Graziola, and uh, they had Harry Carey, you know, as the three announcers. Of course, they went on to to uh, greater things in other places. and But uh, the Cardinals had them all there together in, in, in one group. And so, so it's always, uh, it was just a great experience to, you know, uh, be able to make that jump at age 19 uh, and uh, be able to stay in the big leagues for 20 years. And so, so that was pretty fantastic. And then uh, I was traded, of uh, course, uh, from the Cardinals. I had two subpar years. I had some great years with the Cardinals, and probably my greatest year was 1960 when I led the league in relief pitching, and uh, they gave, after that season, the first fireman award. That was an award for relief pitching, and that was the first one that recognized the importance of relief pitching uh, in in baseball, and I was kind of a, one of the pioneers of relief pitching. Not that I didn't have good relief pitching before my time. I mean, I I can name some some good relief pitchers, but it was not a generally accepted uh, thing in in baseball that in order to win you must have a good bullpen, you know, and uh, and so we kind of started that trend. And and since that time, uh, relief pitching has become uh, more and more specialized, more and more imp important in the game. Uh, because in in today's in today's game, which is much more specialized, uh, you have a starting pitcher, uh, and uh, he's not expected to go much more than six innings. And then sometimes you got a specialized uh, pitcher, relief pitcher for the seventh inning, the eighth inning, and the ninth inning, and uh, your closer, and 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 some real high value relief pitchers only come in at the end of the game when you have a lead, in order to say they don't even want to get them into a tied game, <laughs> where it might go on and on into extra innings. And, and so use them in a, a very specialized way. And, and so, so the game has really changed uh, in that way uh, in relief pitching. And, and uh, myself and White Wilhelm, Elroy Face, and uh, Paranoski and, and uh, some of the relief pitchers at that time were kind of set the, the, the background for what happened later uh, in the game. And I might uh, talk a little bit about trades because, uh, see, when I signed a major league contract, uh, then you're under a uh, contract to that ball club and you, you lose total control uh, as to what happens in your career uh, because they can sell you, they can trade you, uh, uh, you can retire, but they, they actually own you. Uh, and uh, you cannot just say, well, I would rather play for another ball club or I'd rather go somewhere else. Uh, we were not allowed that. And so in baseball, uh, uh, they had that control. Uh, the reserve clause in, uh, in Major League Baseball gave the owners complete control over the players. And so, uh, 
so today, of course, uh, thanks to Kurt Flood and, and thanks to uh, those that actually, uh, you know, pushed this issue and so that uh, that reserve clause was eliminated in baseball. And, and now uh, it's, it's totally different. I think, you know, compared to uh, when I played, for example, uh, money-wise, uh, money wise you know today baseball is big business you know and it's, it's the multi-million dollar industry but when I played it wasn't nearly that way and uh, I played at a time of course they call the time that I played kind of the glory days of the game in the 50s 60s and 70s when it was more fun, I would say, uh, and uh, we had much more contact with the fans and would sign autographs for free, and, uh, but we weren't paid much, much money either. And so I, I think like my whole career, if you total up all my contracts, uh, it probably wouldn't be much over $600,000, you know, my whole 20 years and leading the league many of those years and 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 so this is this is this is what you're dealing with there there compared to today uh with uh with the modern uh places and everything and i think back in my career too uh i think it was uh, kind of uh interesting that i played in the old ballparks you know that were of different dimensions, different designs because of where they had to place them and where the streets were and they had to build this ballpark in there to fit in that environment like uh, Ebbets Field. Uh, in Ebbets Field in Brooklyn is a very small park and they were it was rather limited and uh, you know, I, I played in uh, parks like the old Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia uh, and uh, Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, you know, that, uh, and of course all these ballparks are gone now, you know, and been replaced by new parks and then in some cases uh, been replaced twice <laughs> already since I retired. And of course, uh, they had the old, uh, Wrigley Field in Chicago, and uh, and that's still standing, you know, and, and that's a kind of a classic ballpark. And I played in the old polo grounds, you know, going back uh, to New York, and and when the Giants were in the polo grounds, and uh, and that was a uh, odd-shaped ballpark, very unique, because it was like a big oval-shaped ballpark. And down the the foul lines, it was only 275 feet down each line to hit a home run, you know. And, and then you have all that space in right center, left center, and center field, you know. And so uh, all these all these old parks that I played with, Fenway Park in Boston, you know, which is still there today, and has the green monster in left field, that real tall wall and it doesn't take a, a very long poke to hit that wall you know by a batter so so uh it's just uh when i think about all of that and all the things that i've experienced that way it just is kind of kind of unique uh to experience that